Good morning, living Lord. It's good to be with you this morning. In the words of Paul, you know, who was writing to churches where there was some division, and he said, you know, I understand that there is division among you. We don't need that. And even though the Packers are playing the Bears today, there should be no division among you. It's okay, all right? We're all good, okay? But we're rejoicing in this fall because football season and um, we think about apple picking and pumpkins and all those good things. And so today we have a day with that crisp fall air and that's kind of nice and sunshine to boot. So I don't know that we could ask for anything more. So it's a great day to be here. It's a great day to praise God. And so we will do that. And we'll stand up, please, and let's see either sing along quietly within our masks or for those of you that are at home we encourage you to sing out loud let your neighbors know you're at church even though you're at home <laughs> and sing along as we get started today and so sing along with the band
indeed. I ran out of that grave. It was great. Um, so as we do that today and we know that we're all energized and ready to sing and to pray and to hear God's word for us today, as we do that, let's also remember that sometimes there are things that we need to kind of set aside. And so let's think about all of those things that we want to kind of lay down today and get rid of some of those things that are weighing heavy on our hearts. So close your eyes if you wish. Take a deep breath. Exhale slowly. And come before God. Another deep breath to breathe in God's grace and to breathe out all the stuff that may be weighing heavy on your heart. God, we give you thanks that from the very beginning you have breathed life into us. And we think of all the things that you see us do each and every day. You walk beside us all the time. Some words that come out of our mouths are not the best. And we confess that today to you. And we ask for your strength to do better. Some of our actions haven't been pleasing in your sight. And we ask for your grace so that we may continue to move ahead. God, for all the things that we've done or that we haven't, for all the things we've said or neglected to say, forgive us and continue to come into our hearts so that we may be renewed and we may walk in your grace, assured of your forgiveness, not only this day, but always. All of this we bring before you, God, and we lay it at your feet, knowing that you are always there with your love. Another deep breath. Slowly open your eyes and come back to this space and give thanks to God who is here for us always and who continues to walk beside us. And we remember and we sing along that it's so sweet to walk always with Jesus. Amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise And to know the same the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him How I proved him more and more Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust him
in and I know that thou art with me will be with me till the end Jesus to trust him more. <laughs> we want to give thanks, especially we've started off so great today for our band today. Scott on mandolin, you're hearing that. Thank you so much for bringing that joy in there. Yay. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious God, you turn greatness into goodness for everyone on earth. Continue to shape us into servants in your kingdom that we may continue to serve you, make us love you, and to desire only the things that you desire for us. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to hear the lessons for today. The reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carries our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. All have, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able to receive the Holy Gospel for this day. The Holy Gospel comes to us from Mark, the 10th chapter. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to, forward to Jesus and said to him, uh, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, 
grant us to sit one at your right hand and one to your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And they replied, oh, we're able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear friends, grace and peace to you this day in fullest measure through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I was remembering some old television shows that I used to watch as a kid. Now, I'm going to date myself here, but that's okay. You know, I'm an old lady now. Like Sing Leave It to Beaver, or um, what was the other one? Oh, things like Bonanza. Okay, remember? So what are some of the old television shows that you guys remember watching as kids, even if you're not that old, because your shows might be a little more contemporary? Yeah. Little House on the Prairie. Okay. Anything else? Father Knows Best. Yeah, Father Knows Best. <laughs> Did Father Really Know Best? That's the question we're all asking. Yeah, right. Okay. Any other television shows you remember? Something over here. I Love Lucy. Okay, that's a great show too. Okay. In many of those shows, there were families. There were kids and there were adults. Okay? Bonanza. You know, who could forget little Joe? Or Hoss. <laughs> and, um, and certainly in, you know, Father Knows Best. Or all of those kinds of things like that. There were kids and there were adults. And you had some kids that were probably coming up to the adults. And it reminded me of some of those shows all the time because... It's almost like that in today's gospel lesson. The kids are there. We're in the gospel of Mark. We're walking along this journey. They're getting a little bored with things, you know. It's the same stuff all over Jesus. You know, you keep teaching, you keep healing, you keep doing all this stuff. And here they are. And as they're walking along, they're on the road. And let's not forget where they're headed to. They're headed to Jerusalem. They're headed to Jerusalem, which is not going to be good. Jesus knows and has tried to tell them, this is going to be unpleasant times here. I'm going to go to my death. They're like, ah, oh, no, whatever. You know, they just let that flow right over. But here's the kids walking along, and James and John are walking along too, and they're like, he keeps talking about this new kingdom. Yeah, we want a part of that. We want a part of that. So let's, yeah, let's ask him now. Let's get him. They go up, you know. We want you to just do for us whatever it is we ask. Really? Seriously? What person has ever fallen for that? Those of you that are educators, your students come up to you in the classroom someday and they say, teacher, we just want you to do, I want you to just say yes to this question. I'm going to ask you a question. I just want you to say yes. Uh, no, I don't think so. Or parents, 
with children in the home where your kids come up and say, Mom, Dad, I'm going to ask you something, just want you to agree. Like, no. What is it that you think, you know, how stupid do you think I am? All right. But they try this with Jesus. You know, here it is. We just want you to do whatever it is that we ask. Oh, seriously, really? Okay. So Jesus comes back and says, well, what is it that you are going to ask me? Well, you know, we're talking about this kingdom here. We're talking about some times of glory. We want to be in the places of honor. So let us sit right next to you. One at the left, one at the right. In other stories of other gospel writers, they have kind of moved this off of James and John and said their mother asked them. You know, their mom came and asked. I mean, first of all, it's pretty, it's pretty gutsy that they would ask this anyway. But then, I mean, I don't know. Would you say gutsy, wimpy? That you would have your mom ask? You know? Give them the places of honor. Jesus is like, you don't even know what you're asking. I mean, think of what Jesus is thinking. I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to Golgotha. I'm going to be on the cross. You want the places of honor at my left and my right? I don't think you know what you're asking. You know, are you really able to do this? And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got everything. Not really. It was really hard. I mean, as Mark records this whole thing, I'm thinking, Jesus had a lot of compassion. He had a lot of patience. Because here he is saying, well, I, you know, do you want to rethink this? They're like, no, we got it. We got it. You don't even know. And he tries to teach him this lesson, and you know that it doesn't get through because the lesson becomes one of service. That we're on this walk, we're on our way headed to Jerusalem, and as we do this, I'm trying to teach you not about honor, but about humility. And they're getting caught up in the honor of being with this wonderful person that they have discerned and forgetting about the humility and the service. That the service is key. You know this comes up later because it's there at the Last Supper where he washes the disciples' feet and says again, do you know what I just did for you? I took the place of the lowest servant in the household and I washed your feet. And this is the example that you follow, one of service and humility. It's really tough. I know we think that here in the church we honor people and we are grateful for the service that they bring, and that is one thing. But we forget. We forget all the time. And you think, well, the disciples didn't forget. They learned it eventually. Well, eventually we all learn it, but we still make mistakes. We still get caught up in the trap of today especially in the church. Henry Nouwen, who's a wonderful theologian and writer, had said that in the long and painful history of the church, it's the history of people always tempted to choose power over love, to choose control over the cross, 
and to choose being a leader over being led. We do it all the time. We do it in the church, we do it in our families, we do it in the world. It's a hard lesson to learn. Jesus tried to teach the disciples on this walk, this last walk that they're taking, this journey towards Jerusalem, and he tried up until the very end to teach us all that it's about service. Today, we have these wonderful quilts to bless that our quilters have worked on so hard for the last year. They've come every week and out of scraps and discards that no one wanted, they make things of beauty that will be sent across the globe. They may be someone's only possession. They may be someone's gift of warmth. They may be someone's only bed. And we give thanks for the hands that work on these. But we also know that this is part of what we do. This is part of it. That we serve. We had our, our high schoolers that went on their, their mission trip and our adults that went on their mission trip and they serve. Why? For the honor of coming up here and telling us about it? No, believe me, nobody wants to come up here and tell us about it. They do it because that's what they're called to do. And we're all called. We're all called to do this stuff. We're all called to be of service and to spread the good news. Now, I know that's not up anybody's alley here. You're like, I'm not preaching to people. I'm not doing this. You know, that's not me. No, it's not. Maybe it's not. But it is about your service. And you preach the good news by how you act in the world. You do that. I had this conversation with my grandson this last week because we were talking about stuff and topics that had come up in his confirmation class and, and we were talking about things and, and I said, you know, he was talking about the, the verse in, in Matthew about the Great Commission. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not going to baptize people. I'm not going to do this. And I said, you do it by what you do. You're already doing it. He went with some friends. They've done Feed My Starving Children. He went and served at a soup kitchen. And I said, that wasn't really fun, was it? And he goes, well, not really. But it was interesting. I never realized, and then he talked about seeing all the people that needed to eat that day. And I said, by what you did, you preached the gospel and good news to them. By what you do in your daily life, you can preach the gospel or not. It's how we treat people. It's what we do in the world. We have those choices every single day. Do we make mistakes? Absolutely. Do we screw it up? Of course. But then we ask for forgiveness and we start over again. Those are the things that Jesus was talking about. Not coming and asking for the place of honor or fighting to always be the leader, but instead by doing the work and serving. That's what we do. This is what our call is as Christian people, is to walk with God, to walk along and to listen to the teachings and then on our own journeys to continue to live them out. So we gather here, we gather as a church, we gather to grow in our faith, in our knowledge, and then we're sent. We're sent out to serve. 
It's a misnomer that um, anybody lives here at the church. I know from some young kids, they think that the pastor maybe just sleeps here all the time. They don't. But we come here and we gather. Or we gather with family or groups. And we are growing in that faith. And then we go out and we serve others. Sometimes it's not always great, but we do our best. And then we walk. We continue to walk along that road with Jesus. Sometimes we don't learn the lessons, but we continue to walk anyway. And we listen. And we try all the time. As we struggle in this journey, let's remember to hold on to our faiths, but then to look outside ourselves and consider the other in the world, whether that's in your home or your community or your school, your place of work or the world. And then we serve in those ways. Let's pray. Gracious God, we ask you to walk with us. Renew us in our faith, in our baptism, so that we may remember who we are and we remember the tasks that you have set upon us to serve others, to continue to be humble in our walk, to grow in our faith and then to go out into the world and to live that faith. So walk with us, Jesus. Give us your example and continue to strengthen us each and every day. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing with the band as we sing about walking along with Jesus. And a wonderful song by Peter Mayer, Ever Walk With Me, Lord.
grace has found me Will I recognize it at all? Lift this song of sadness Into gladness at your feet To hear your voices calling Come walk with me invite you now to join in prayers as we pray for those that we know and for those that are known only to God. Holy One, for the gift of the church that's handed down through the ages and for all who carry on servant ministry of Jesus, we give thanks. We ask you to send your spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and send your spirit upon everyone to equip them with gifts that will be serving in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for all those who work towards peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart. We ask you to bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, homelessness. We ask you to create places of refuge for all people and use us as we serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and healing God, you do the work of healing in body, mind, and spirit. We ask you to surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness. Reach down your hand of healing and bring comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you, God, to bless all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, volunteers, counters, committee and group leaders, musicians, teachers, students, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of saints, you continue to inspire us with hope until we are gathered at your eternal feast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for those who serve here, for hands that have made the quilts that are before us, for young people who will receive their Bibles today. Continue to strengthen us as we continue to serve you in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Confident that you hear us, God, we place our prayers into your hands, and we pray these all through Jesus Christ, our truth and our life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please safely share a sign of peace with your neighbor today.
You may be seated. And we take this time at our offering to recognize the quilts that are here as an offering into the world today. So I ask you to pray with me in blessing upon these items of beauty that are here before us. Let's pray. Loving God, the quilts that are before you are the things that have been made out of discards and scraps from those who said they didn't want them anymore. Now they go as things of beauty to those who will receive them with grateful hearts. Continue to bless all who have prepared them and all who will receive them. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we receive today's musical offering from our wonderful musicians that are here with us today, and we thank them for their efforts also in offering and in blessing. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you were trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain. You feel lost, but he's a way maker. If you need freedom to save it, he's a prison chicken savior. If you got chains, but he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. Worn out from the same old fight. We've all run the things we know just ain't right. When there's a better life, when there's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, so he's a way maker. If you need freedom to save it, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, well, he's a chain breaker. You believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody Before we start on um, uh, gathering around the table, I would like to also recognize and invite up our young people that are receiving their Bibles today. So 
um, with their with their families. So come on up. This is an exciting day for them, and they, um, we, we actually did a Zoom class on some of this, and so um, they haven't actually had a chance to actually hold and touch and feel and, and everything with these yet, but they will in just a little bit. But we want to thank, um, thank you for providing a space for them also, a space for them to learn and to grow into God's Word. Parents, you made a promise long ago at their baptism and you promised to place in their hands the holy scriptures so that they could learn about god and they could learn to trust and they could learn to love god so we're presenting the bibles to you and we ask you not only to fulfill that promise but think about the other promises that you made to continue to encourage faith and growth in your young person and to continue to be with them and be an example in their faith and in their life. And we ask you now to fulfill the promise that you made to your child long ago and place in their hands the Holy Scriptures. Will you all pray with me? God, we ask you to bless these Bibles and bless these young people. As they open up the word of God, let it open up their hearts so that they may continue to love you, you may continue to dwell in them, and they may continue to learn to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, do you remember what I told you guys you need to do first? <laughs> write your name in your Bible. The first name and the last name. Because we got some Bibles floating around here. We don't know who they belong to. And though they have a first name in them, we still don't know because there's lots of people with that first name. So write your names in there. And then give it to your parents because they have some things to write in your Bible for you also. Okay? All right. Don't forget. Okay? Because what's the punishment if you forget? <laughs> See that cross up there? <laughs> no, we're not going to hang you from the cross. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You can be seated. I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life. You fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his life given for us, his rising from the grave, his body given up, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. 
and by this bread and cup make of us the body of your Son. For through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The word of the day today, for those of you who've been waiting for this, is service. Service. Please remember that as you're today, um, that the um, table is set and extends out and distribution takes place as you exit and this is the body and blood of Christ that is given and shed for you. A couple of announcements as we dismiss today. First of all, a reminder that on Saturday there is the um, uh, bonfire that's coming up. So please take note of that. Look at the times and make sure that you are here to enjoy the fellowship and fun. On Sunday, next Sunday, is our trunk or treat in the afternoon. And if you can decorate your trunk or, or the hood of your car, decorate whatever you want, um, to be a distribution point for candy, or if you can donate candy for the distribution, that would be great. Young people are encouraged to come and... Um, go through the trunk or treat in a safe, a safe environment to trunk or treat on that day, and it'll be a wonderful celebration, and so we're hoping for that. And then um, also know that the following Sunday after that, or the following weekend after that, Saturday is our time of confirmation, service of confirmation. Uh, please keep in prayer those young people <clears throat> of this congregation who will be affirming their baptismal promises. And then on Sunday is Reformation Sunday. So not next Sunday, but the Sunday after. Wear something red, celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit as we continue to um, celebrate that gift in the church that continues to reform always and forever. Now, receive God's blessing as you go into the world to serve and to love. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, let's sing one last song, My Lighthouse. Remember that Jesus is the light that continues to direct our lives. Get out your dancing shoes. If you need to move a little bit, that's great too. And sing along quietly into your mask or at home, dance along too. <laughs> Will lead us to
the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. Far before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. Hey, my right house, my right house. And for Mr. Bob, nice throwing, catching of the pick there. In case you didn't notice, that was a little, that was a little pick action there. <laughs> Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.